Hello, hello, this is Simone. Today I want to share my newest journal with you. Yes, you heard that right. I actually made the switch from the Stalogy 365 Days Notebook in A6 to a Nanami Paper um, Cafe Note Notebook. And the reason why I did that is because in the past six months in the last six months of 2018, I have used an older um, from Hobonichi Avec in A6 size that was gifted to me and that had the Tomoya River paper. And so in the last couple of weeks of 2018, I, I had actually purchased a Hobonichi for 2019. And in the last days, I decided I was not going to use that. I was going to use a different journal, an undated one for that, for my daily journal, because I didn't want the daily pages that are dated in the Hobonichi to remind me of all the days that I didn't journal. I wanted to celebrate the fact that I journaled a lot. So I ordered the Stalogy 365 Days Notebook. It is called Editor Series. It is an A6 size and it has the days, weeks and months it faintly printed at the top of the page and you could if you wanted to use it for a daily journal and mark your days up there just use a pen and circle or highlight the 12 months the seven days and the 31 days of each month and then it also has on the side of the grid it also has the num pages or the the grid is numbered from 8 to 21 so that you could create a timeline of your schedule uh, the grid is a five millimeter grid and the book itself has 368 pages. Now, I was really, really very spoiled with the Tomoe River paper. And even though the Stalogy paper, which the whole book is made in Japan as well, is a really good paper, just wasn't as good as the Tomoya River paper. And I noticed right away when I started using it that some of my inks from my fountain pens would um, bleed through. And so I decided to research a little more and I found the Nanami Cafe Note notebooks. They are based in the US. So a Stalogy notebook would probably be much cheaper for international customers since you could order that through Amazon. The Nanami, you have to go to the website, which is Nanami Papers, and order from there. And I haven't really checked out the uh, uh, price on that notebook. Now, the Nanami notebook has 480 pages, so a bit more than the Stalogy one. They are both um, bound as a flat lay book. The paper in the Nanami is a Tomoe River paper. The grid is the same as the Hobonichi. It's a 3.7 millimeter grid and the pages are fully gridded. Now what you just saw me show you is that I had realized that I had just used the very first signature of my Stalogy notebook. And so um, since I had trouble and since I just didn't love the paper as much as I thought I would, I decided to cut the first signature out of this notebook and go ahead and order, order the new notebook and then um, find out if I would really love it. I, I'm that type of person who actually in school um, rewrote her notes. I would choose my notebooks on the smoothness of the paper and if it wasn't right I would just toss the whole notebook and I really I'm a really I'm a paper snob so that's why I decided to go go ahead and purchase the Nanami paper cafe note and I just used the very first signature and glued it in and also used some washi to hold the pages in there and now I'm I'm really, really happy with the new notebook. I love how the pens glide over the paper. That's just something that 
I love. And since I'm a paper nut lover, a paper nerd, I think that's okay. Price-wise, both books are almost the same price. The Nanami on Nanami Papers is $18 plus shipping. Um, if you have Amazon Prime, then probably the Stylogy is cheaper because it's, I think, the same, 18 or 18.95, and it is then shipped to you for free. Now, I decided to try the exact same pens and inks plus watercolor in both notebooks. I had already did made, I had already prepared an ink test earlier when I started using the notebook to, just to see how the paper would um, react. The only pen that I couldn't really find was the Pentel sign pen. So I am not going to use that on the Nanami paper. What I noticed right away was that the uh, Tombow pens were really bold and a lot um, the colors were a lot bolder and brighter than on the Stylogy paper. But that is something that I also realized with or noticed with the uh, watercolor that you can see later on. The inks that I really have trouble with, and I don't know if it's the ink or the combination of the ink and the fountain pen, is the noodle. A lot of the Noodler's inks, I, the only bottle I purchased is the 54th Massachusetts ink of Noodler's inks. And it's the worst ink in my most favorite pen. It just gushes out of this pen. I don't know why it's, it's probably so wet in that pen and maybe the pen itself is a wet pen and so those two two don't go well together but i tried it in the lamy safari fountain pen and it worked a little bit better but it actually the 54th massachusetts actually bleeds through the stology paper so what else i have been using i i was trying to show you that Sometimes, or especially with the Stylogy paper, if you are indecisive or if you're like writing and thinking and resting your pen um, a little bit longer in one space, then the chance of it, of the ink bleeding through the paper is a lot higher. And I had that with another ink, not only the um, Noodler's ink, but also with a, what was it called? that black one that you can see on top of there it's the was it the carbon black from um platinum i don't remember you could probably see it if i had slowed it down but the video was unfortunately 35 minutes long and i figured that nobody wanted to see a comparison of two notebooks that lasted um 35 minutes. So now I'm showing you that the overall both papers actually behave very very similar. Um, I could not see a difference in the behavior with gel inks, with um, what's the other one? Not fountain pen. That's the difference that I saw the the felt tip markers there is no difference in how the papers take ink so the only ink that both papers really are okay with is the uh, chalk ink other inks or pigment pigment ink that sits on top of the paper all the dye inks all the inks that are a bit wetter will bleed right through the paper no matter if it's the stylogy or the tomoe river paper um, what is the name of the pen, the Hobonichi pen? It's not a gel ink, it's a like, I don't remember, ballpoint pen. Now there we are. The ballpoint pens do not have a difference at all. None of the um, felt tip pens that I used bled through. The only problem that I had with the Stylogy was that the wetter the ink, um, the broader the nib, the more or the likely the 
paper was going to bleed or the ink was going to bleed through the paper. Uh, the Zebra Sarasa in 0.7 was a very big candidate for being for bleeding through as well as that ink that you can see in the top. It's a Karandash black ink. Now I used, I tried the Versafine. It is a very strange ink. It doesn't bleed through a lot of papers that other inks bleed through, but Tomo River paper and Versafine ink just don't go well together. So the dye inks that I tried, as well as the Versafine ink bleed through. The only ink that you can see that the red one with the dauber, that is a chalk ink, from Prima that didn't bleed through. What was very interesting to see was that with the Tomoe River paper, the ink bled, didn't, you, you couldn't really see it on the back side of the paper, but what happened was that it looked like teeny tiny holes where the ink bled through and printed on the other side of the page. And that was very a very interesting find. Um, uh, that happened to all of the dye inks, the ink bleeding through onto the other page, not onto the back side, so as much as onto the other side. Um, yeah, so that is, I think I'm, I'm still with, yeah, now I'm trying the dye ink on the um, Tomoe River paper and on the Stology, I think because I wasn't so sure which one of the ink samples that I had already made was the dye and the chalk ink. I had already also purchased, or I have also purchased, a um, date stamp that is a self-inking stamp, and that was is also an ink that almost bleeds through. You can see it, it's ghosting a lot. It's not bleeding through per se, but it's very visible on the other side. But I will still use it because I love that stamp. And then the reason why I used three different kinds of stamps is because sometimes when you have such a full image like this paint stroke that you can see, an ink might not work and bleed through, but with a finer, uh, very thin line like the Top Monday, you could maybe use a, an ink that you would not be able to use with the um, full ink, fully inked stamp and the big image, if you understand, get what I mean here. And now the last thing that I wanted to try, because that was something that I was very, I really love how the watercolor sits on top of the Tomoe River paper. It is really, if you have never tried using watercolor on a Tomoe River paper, you should definitely do that because it's so much fun to see how the colors, how the the color sits on top of the paper and how the pigment um, mixes together and it, it looks I really love the look of that and that's it, it doesn't really happen the same way in the stology the water and ink um, goes right into the paper not as bad as a non watercolor paper or cardstock um, and yes watercolor behaves completely different on Tomoe River paper than it actually does on um, designated watercolor paper. Um, what I found really, really interesting in this um, image is you can see where the ink bled through onto this page. There, there were tiny ink dots. And around those ink dots, the paper didn't take the watercolor as easily, like it looked like it was resisting the ink even more. And you can see it's wet. I really used a lot of water and a lot of pigmented watercolor. And you can see the difference. The water, the, the watercolor sits on top of the paper. It crinkles, but, um, and it is also a lot more vibrant than the Stalogy as you can see right in this image. And you can see it's, even though, well, I did it like 
two or three minutes apart from each other. So yes, naturally the Stalogy paper is already dried a little bit more, but um, it has also already soaked into the paper and not as much um, water sits on top. I am very happy that I made the switch. I know the differences are, are minor, but they were the ones that really bugged me. And so I'm very happy that I decided to change. What are you using to journal and how is it holding up to the different media that you are using? Leave a comment below and I hope to see you next time. Until then, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. See you soon. Bye.